Good day, beloved of Christ. Welcome to prayer on Friday, the 27th of October. We begin with a deep breath, our opening responses, and the call to confession. To the call, incline your ear to me. Please respond. Make haste to answer when I call. Incline your ear to me together. Make haste to answer when I call. Lord, hear my prayer. Let my cry come before you. Hide not your face from me in the day of my trouble. Incline your ear to me together. Make haste to answer when I call. You, O Lord, endure forever, and your name from age to age. You will arise and have compassion on Zion, for it is time to have pity upon her. Incline your ear to me together. Make haste to answer when I call. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Incline your ear to me together. Make haste to answer when I call. Let us confess our sins together. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. O come, let us worship. Lamentations chapter 2 verses 8 to 15. A heart-rending and vivid account of the destruction of the daughter of Zion, Jerusalem, as well as the nation. 8 to 15. The Lord determined to tear down the wall around the daughter of Zion. He stretched out a measuring line and did not withhold his hand from destroying. He made ramparts and walls lament. Together they wasted away. Her gates have sunk into the ground. Their bars he has broken and destroyed. Her king and her princes are exiled among the nations. The law is no more, and her prophets no longer find visions from the Lord. The elders of the daughter of Zion sit on the ground in silence. They have sprinkled dust on their heads and put on sackcloth. The young women of Jerusalem have bowed their heads to the ground. My eyes fail from weeping. I am in torment within. My heart is poured out on the ground because my people are destroyed, because children and infants faint in the streets of the city. They say to their mothers, Where is bread and wine? as they faint like wounded men in the streets of the city, as their lives ebb away in their mother's arms. What can I say for you? With what can I compare you, O daughter of Jerusalem? To what can I liken you, that I may comfort you, O virgin daughter of Zion? Your wound is as deep as the sea. Who can heal you? The visions of your prophets were false and worthless. They did not expose your sin to ward off your captivity. The oracles they gave you were false and misleading. All who passed your way clapped their hands at you. They scoff and shake their heads at the daughter of Jerusalem. Is this the city that was called the perfection of beauty, the joy of the whole earth? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As I read these, I cannot help to think how they apply both to those who were massacred in Israel by Hamas recently and the ongoing destruction of so many civilian lives as well in Gaza. The call to lament is suitable. When will violence based on discrimination and prejudice end in all the earth? When we pray the Lord's Prayer later, consider with me the petition, Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Until that day, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. Reading now, 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verses 1 through 9, the subject switches from the resurrection body, a worthy reflection, I might encourage you to read once again, 
but the collection of God's people in chapter 16. This is a collection that St. Paul was gathering from among the communities in Greece for the communities in the Holy Land who were experiencing famine. Now, about the collection for God's people, do what I told the Galatian churches to do. On the first day of every week, each one of you should set aside a sum of money in keeping with his income, saving it up, so that when I come, no collections will have to be made. Then, when I arrive, I will give letters of introduction to the men you approve and send them with your gift to Jerusalem. If it seems advisable for me to go also, they will accompany me. After I go through Macedonia, I will come to you, for I will be going through Macedonia. Perhaps I will stay with you a while, or even spend the winter, so that you can help me on my journey wherever I go. I do not want to see you now and make only a passing visit. I hope to spend some time with you, if the Lord permits. But I will stay on at Ephesus until Pentecost, because a great door for effective work has opened to me, and there are many who oppose me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The collection is important because it demonstrates the family nature of the young church across ethnic lines, across national borders. By the simple act of compassion for the people of Jerusalem and the collection for their relief, Paul is building an international movement, the global church. In the last few verses, he discusses his own travel plans and expresses his desire to spend time with the church at Corinth. We would call that quality time today. It reveals his love for the people. Now, my friends, let us pray to God, the Lord of the harvest, that he will bring to fruition all that he desires for the creation. Let us pray. Lord of creation, we see that the fields are ripe for harvesting. We pray for your church, that we may be ready to gather fruit for eternal life. Lord of the harvest, together, in your mercy, hear us. You have created the universe by your eternal word and have blessed humankind in giving us dominion over the earth. We pray for the world, that we may honor and share its resources and live in reverence for the creation and in harmony with one another. Lord of the harvest, together, in your mercy, hear us. Your Son has promised that the Spirit would lead us into all truth. We pray for the community in which you have set us, for one another and for ourselves, that we may bring forth the fruit of the Spirit in love and joy and peace. Lord of the harvest, together, in your mercy, hear us. You have given your people a rich land, yet by sin we have made a world of suffering and sorrow. We pray for those who bear the weight of affliction, that they may come to share in the life of wholeness and plenty with peace. Lord of the harvest, in your mercy hear us. Your Son, Jesus Christ, is the first fruits of the resurrection and will reap the harvest of the dead at the end of time. We pray that he will gather us all together with those who have gone before in the banquet of the age to come. Lord of the harvest, together in your mercy hear us. Source of all life and giver of all that is good, hear our prayers and grant us all that is in accordance with your will through Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Beloved, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. May God, our Creator, who clothes the lilies and feeds the birds of the air, bestow on you his care and increase the harvest of your righteousness. And the blessing of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon you and yours this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Have a blessed day today, Friday. Very much looking forward to the hoedown tomorrow. I hope you have a blessed day.
day, TGIF.